you're good to go. Thank you, Allison. Good evening, everyone. I am Karen Green, Deputy Supervisor of the Town of Manlius, filling in tonight for Supervisor Theobald, um, who's away on a well-deserved vacation, and I appreciate this unique opportunity. We'll start by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and if we can go around uh, the board, uh, please, and introduce yourself and say hello. Hi, I'm Sarah Bollinger, Counselor. John Deere, Town Counselor. Elaine Denton, Town Counselor. Caitlin Creasel, Town Counselor. Heather Water, Town Counselor. Great, I'm glad you're all here, and I also would like to recognize and am very grateful for their um, participation and attendance tonight, and that is, uh, well, Randy hopefully will join us. Uh, Chief Kroll, Michael Kroll, uh, Robert Cushing, Highway Superintendent, Tim Frateski, our town attorney, Doug Miller, town engineer, yep, there's Doug, Ann Oot, our town manager, and of course, whom we all rely on, Allison Weber, our town clerk. So thank you very much. Uh, we have an interesting agenda tonight, but it should be brief. And we'll start with uh, an approval of the minutes for July 8th, please. Um, this is Sarah. I did make a couple of uh, adjustments to the minutes. I'd like, if those are okay with you, Allison, I'd like to move approval. Yep, uh, they were just clerical in nature, so they're good to go. So I'd, I'd like to move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Confirmed. Thank you. And then we have an approval of abstract number 15. Hi. Um, let's see what you are. Madam Deputy Supervisor, uh, I make a motion to approve abstract number 15 in the amount of $411,700. Seven hundred and sixty-three and sixty-four cents. May I have a second? I'll second, John. Thank you, John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Confirmed. Um, item number five. Uh, we have been in discussion uh, for quite some time with our town of Manlius Police Department and the um, Fayetteville. Mainly a school district regarding the uh, special patrol officer and Chief Kroll, if you can fill us all in from there and what's been going on um, since we last met, please. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, the, uh, so the FM school district uh, quite some time ago formed a, uh, a safety committee uh, that I was a, a part of and um, the, uh, we had a, a series of recommendations um, that the FM school district would like to uh, implement to include uh, the addition of some special patrol officers for the FM district. Uh, the goal was, uh, is they would like a, a uniformed officer um, to be <clears throat> at every one of their campuses in, in, within their district. In order to do that, um, they actually voted on and approved four positions uh, and uh, because uh, of the unique nature of, of that, <clears throat> we identified that uh, an SPO, which is actually a, a peace officer, not a police officer, there's a minor difference between the two classifications in the state of New York, um, but uh, we all agreed that uh, an SPO or a, a basically a retired police officer that would come back uh, be in uniform and uh, to be in those schools in order to provide the safety and security as well as the uh, the forming of partnerships and relationships with with the students uh, that was all voted upon and uh, we, we came up with a contractual uh, or an, an agreement 
and uh, the FM school district uh, would would like to proceed with that with that agreement. I think everybody has has that agreement has looked at the contract, and uh, just so you're aware, uh, an SPO is is basically like a part time police officer essentially, but classification is a peace officer. So they're uniformed. They um, they do basically all the same types of duties that a school information resource officer would do, um, but uh, at really like a, a lesser level. Um, so there's very little burden on the, on the town of Manlius. I've agreed to, to accept this as, as an addition to uh, what, we're, what we're doing right now in the interest of uh, uh, the, uh, the request of the FM school district. The FM school board has uh, reviewed the contract and completely understands the agreement and uh, they've also uh, unanimously agreed to, uh, to go forward with, with the program. So tonight I was just looking for some, uh, 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 basically a vote to allow the town supervisor to, to uh, sign this agreement between the town of Manlius and the FM school district to proceed forward with, at this time, two. Uh, originally we we're gonna start with one, but uh, uh, the superintendent had indicated that he would like to start with two and it would be two essentially part-time police employees that would uh, fill this role as SPO. Thank you, Chief. And um, being part-time, uh, these officers would still be in the school eight hours a day, five days a week. I'm a, and then um, they just wouldn't uh, be back into the department in the summer that it, that is correct. Unlike the full time, unlike the full time school information resource officers that FM has three right now, they support three of those. Uh, these individuals would only be in the school. They wouldn't do anything other than school duty uh, during the summertime. They'd be on break, just like the teachers are on break and the students are on break. And um, as a as a part time position, uh, they wouldn't receive any of the benefits and. And by contract, actually, in agreement, we, we would not use them for anything other than school assignment. And it is a two-year contract right now, too, correct? Well, it's it's actually a one-year contract. It just seems like a two-year contract because of their their budget cycle. So it's intended to be an annual, okay. annual okay. agreement. Yeah. Okay. It's a two, two semesters. Um, so it's the 2021 school year and the 21-22 school year. Is there any discussion? Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, Deputy, sure, go ahead, Caitlin. That's okay, thank you. Um, uh, so uh, I wonder, Chief, if you're, um, if you have some background information on what the school district has, um, has done in terms of why they're bringing this to the town why they're interested in having these individuals in the school like what is the what is the thought process behind that and what is the the need really for these additional um for these spos or for these additional officers to be in the school well the need was identified through this committee that that i mentioned earlier <clears throat> fm school district uh had a school safety uh committee that we put together and identified uh, needs for the school district so it was it was exclusively identified through this committee at FM School District. Um, in, in addition, really, they just wanted uh, for additional safety and security and, and uh, to sort of piggyback on our existing school information resource officer program. Uh, they all agreed uh, that it was very prudent uh, to have additional individuals in the school. And that's where we came up with the SPO program. Other school districts in Onondaga County are, are, have already done it, have already implemented the process. And it just <clears throat> was natural uh, for, uh, for them to, to come to us and ask for uh, these, these, these extra uh, personnel to, to be in the schools. Uh, we- Who uh, uh, that committee? Who, who, what was the makeup of it? The committee, the safety committee was, was ch uh, chaired and organized by um, a professor out of uh, uh, Oswego 
and uh, she uh, she's kind of like a local expert essentially on, on, on school safety. She actually mm -hmm. also chaired the committee for Onondaga County when the district attorney put together a similar program to identify school needs and safety. So she chaired the FM uh, committee, uh, but it, compri it was comprised of the superintendent, the police department, the fire department, members of the school board, uh, community members. Um, I'm probably missing a couple of roles there, but it was a it was a pretty uh, um, uh, unique uh, committee that FM put together uh, to identify uh, safety and security needs for for their district. How many uh, how many people were on the committee total? Do you have any? And it doesn't have to be exact, but like rough idea. I don't know exactly, but it was there had to have been ten to fifteen people there. Okay. From, various aspects of, of the community. And it ha did this go to the, the broader FM community for uh, feedback um, in any way? Well, the, the school board was, was affiliated with this and, and that's where the feedback comes from. They're, they're the school board, so they provide feedback from students, teachers, uh, administrators, community, the, the whole bit. And did this, um, they all, did it pass unanimously to bring this to us or were there some people opposed to it? No, I, I, I Dr. Tice, I know is listening right now from, from the school district and he'd be able to give me a, a better information on that because I didn't chair the committee. I was just a member of the committee. Yeah. If you don't have the exact answers, that's okay. I'm just trying to get a, I'm trying to get a sense of um, just the, the conversations that have happened and um, what, what the types of discussions were so that I, I know a little bit better where this, where the need is coming from and what the justification for it is. Hey, Caitlin, I don't, mean to, I don't want to start. I don't want to interrupt you um, because I really did so, uh, and I apologize for rudely interrupting you at our last meeting. I actually wanted to say that I just found, I remember this initiative because I remember after the Parkland shooting, um, I went to one of the very first meetings that ended up uh, uh, pre being the precursor to the committee. They formed the committee after that. They called, I, and I quickly looked it up. They called, and my dog is trying to come into this room, apologies. They called it the Safety and Security Task Force. They covered four key areas, mental health, threat assessment, facilities, training, and personnel. It was a 27 member group, um, representatives from all the school buildings, some parents, high school students, um, and this was, it was convened in 2018. And they met eight times or were scheduled to meet eight times and they did a preliminary report on the progress and then they did findings um, that were presented to the Board of Education and then the final uh, report was given to the Board of Education. The thing is, is that, and I say this lovingly because our, our meetings are also not always well attended, the board meetings are often not very well attended. So I think one of the other sort, I, what I remember as a, you know, as a parent was that the um, they reported on it in their newsletter um, that came through if, if I, I think um, folks, uh, I my kids go to FM and I I pay you know I'm not like studying it every day but I pay pretty decent attention and I just I didn't really see this come across anything so I was just wondering I certainly could have missed it but um, uh, Dr. Dr. Tice is actually uh, an attendee in the room, and if you'd like, I can add him and allow him to speak if you have questions and that's something you'd like to do. I think that would be helpful. Okay, hold on one second, and I'll get right on that. Sure. Well, so I just welcome, have a Andy. While Dr. Tice gets connected, um, Chief, I'm just curious, you know, some of the duties in here are like counseling or providing a counseling resource and stuff like that, and I just wanted to know, is there because most of these folks are going to be previously tr like thoroughly trained through some police department. Um, and I just wanted to know, is there any additional training or like optional training that maybe not every officer gets that these SPOs would be getting? <clears throat> That's a great question. I'm glad you, that you asked that. So early on in the process, when Dr. Tice and I started to kick around this idea of uh, bringing on SPOs, I was very adamant in, in indicating to him that these people just can't be anybody in our uniform. Uh, they not only will receive the minimum qualifications and, and training associated with the position, but they will also attend all of our normal in-service training program that every town of Manly's police officer receives. 
which is probably more than any other agency in Onondaga County. So I, I told him, I said, if, if we commit to this, if and we agree to do this, they have to be equally trained, at least equally trained, than our, our, our average town of Manly's police officer. And he agreed to that. So part of the agreement would be, um, in addition to 100% reimbursement from the FN school district, but uh, they would be allowed to leave the school and come to our normal annual in-service training programs um, so that they would have the, at least the minimal amount of training that any other manliest police officer would have. And if, if that changed in any way, uh, I, would, I would pull the plug because I, I, I don't want manliest police officers, uh, any, it, well, if it's an SPO or a manliest police officer, they, they can't wear a uniform unless they're adequately and fully trained uh, in, in every aspect of, of those positions. So, and in addition to that, our accreditation dictates that. Uh, CLIA accreditation indicates that no matter what the assignment is, well, if it's a police officer, a peace officer, an SPO, uh, whatever the case may be, they have to meet minimum uh, standards and qualifications uh, for training in order to, to be in that assignment. Um, so, so you're right, they, they would get our, our normal training like every manly police officer does, but in addition to that, there are other trainings that are specifically associated with the school resource officer program. They would receive that training as well. And FM has agreed to cover the cost of that as well. Dr. Tice is uh, in the room and able to speak now. Thank you, Chief. Does anyone have any uh, questions or comments for Dr. Tice or the Chief? Um, Dr. Tice, if you wouldn't mind, um, I asked a few questions there. If you had any information you wanted to add to uh, the Chief's assessment of, um, of, you know, the road I was kind of going down a little bit, if you have anything to add to that, that would be very helpful. Uh, good evening. This is Craig Tice, and I certainly appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, before the town board. Uh, yeah, in terms of the program, uh, since my arrival uh, five years ago, I began the conversation with Chief Marlowe at the time, and so this has been ongoing. This is nothing that we have rushed into. It's been very thoughtful and deliberate over the course of the past five years, trying to take into account not only the security and safety needs for the students, uh, but also uh, the administrative uh, part of it and dealing with the union and moving forward. So it's been very deliberate and thoughtful and I appreciate uh, Chief's work on this to, to wrap it up here at the end. Uh, what really stemmed from those conversations over the years and culminated as the Chief indicated with our recent safety and security task force was the need for a presence, a response uh, in terms of the event of an emergency. And so having every campus covered, which was identified by some of the parents on the task force, such as Mott Road. As you know, uh, we operate six buildings on four campuses. Uh, so in some ways, the SPOs will be able to provide that redundancy. They will report to the CIROs. As you know, we all work for the same taxpayers and I think everyone has tried to be very mindful in terms of the costs of the CIROs. And we have certainly, uh, I think, supported with three positions. If you recall, five years ago, we only had one position. And since my arrival, we've been able to add the other two, not only to provide service at the high school, but also both middle schools. So as you could expect, uh, it begged the next question of moving the program forward and providing some support for the elementary schools. So as Chief indicated, uh, we did put two in the budget for this year, uh, and then we put two in the budget for this upcoming school year, which we're already in the middle of. That we put a freeze on. So as all of us, we had to tighten our belts. Uh, so I'm really here, even though we assumed we would be adding four over time, to cover both our, excuse me, all three elementary schools and having redundancy at our largest building, the high school. Ideally, we'd like to go with four, but at this point in the budget, we have the two positions. In all likelihood, it will be Mott Road, and then the extra position will be a floater to support the high school, but also being able to report to both middle school campuses to provide support to those officers as well who really have to cover two buildings on each of those campuses. 
So I don't know if that's helped to augment the questions that you would ask or if there's other information that you would like, but as Chief indicated, it was a result of the task force. There were a lot of other asks as well in terms of security, uh, uh, camera systems, uh, laminate for uh, single point of entries, but also uh, social emotional counselors. As you know, the district has added homeschool liaisons, a combination of school psychologists, counselors, and social workers to be able to connect with our families that often find themselves unable to connect for one reason or another, working multiple jobs. Uh, so we want to do our part to be able to reach out to those families as well. So building these relationships and having the stability, I appreciate your support and the chief's support for this, having worked in another district uh, where when I arrived there, it was more of a revolving door, uh, people looking for, uh, you know, over time, uh, they may have been Syracuse University security officers. As you know, the strength of any of our programs here, uh, whether it's the CSIROs and then now with the SPOs, hopefully at the elementary schools with your approval, it's building those relationships uh, with the students and being able to be a resource for them. So, And providing stability. Thank you, Dr. Tice, and thank you for uh, answering the questions and commenting. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Elaine. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I just have some clarifications. So this says that it would start September 1st, 2020, and it would expire on June 30th, 2022. So to me, it sounds like it's a two-year agreement. It should be one year. I cannot, uh, it should read one year. I don't know how that, it must have been a typographical error that was so yeah, it, it's similar to our school information resource officers that we enjoy a contract with both ESM and FM. Those are, have always been one year contracts. So that was the intent. So if we need to adjust the time, time frames, then, then we could do that. Right. So that's my other question because on the 17th, well, there's like a point in here that says 17 when we would renegotiate, it would be May of 2021. So that would indicate a one year contract. So the, the, there needs to be a little bit of adjustment on the the time frame for this for it to for me to make make sense um and then the other point i just um saw in here was again uh what counselor dear mentioned about the confidential counseling um i um i don't know how, i mean i know it's potentially confidential between the officer and the student but at the same time you are talking to a police officer so how much um, you know, confidentially, like, can you say that it is confidential when potentially it could be used against you? I don't know. Uh, is the question directed to me or the chief? I'm sorry. Either one. <laughs> well, I can <laughs> just, I can, I can, I'll take a stab at it first okay. and then the chief can provide color commentary here. Uh, <laughs> I'll do the play by play. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, in our DASA regulations, the Dignity for All Students Act, uh, it is stipulated, and it's stipulated again in the contracts, that uh, the uh, officers cannot engage in student discipline. So as you might expect, my administrators have a little bit more latitude in enforcing the district code of conduct. So uh, if it's a criminal matter, certainly, uh, or a life safety matter, it's wonderful to have the, uh, the law enforcement at our disposal, but our first go-to usually is the administrators who handle all of the student uh, infractions and so forth. So they will oftentimes bring in school counselors to assist with that, especially if a student's having difficulty or working towards restorative justice. So we try not to make a mountain out of a molehill unless it's absolutely necessary, but knowing that the backup support is there in the event of a life safety incident is I know very important to the administrators. Well said, Dr. Tice. Uh, we, we've had and enjoyed such a great relationship with the FM School District with our school information resource officer program. <clears throat> we've never had an issue with communication uh, when it comes to uh, some of those matters and they work so closely with the school administrators and follow all the guidelines from uh, the education department and, and, and the district 
and uh, which is consistent with what the what the goal is and the objectives are of the entire program. So, it. Uh, Chief, that I, actually it leads me into a, a question. I'm, I I want to make sure that I articulate well. Um, the the role of these officers is to um, to provide elements of safety in the school, um, but safety from whom? Like what? Who is the enemy in this situation that we are trying to mitigate by having these officers in the district? Uh, as you can imagine, depending on the age of the child and the developmental level, it could be something from bike safety to Halloween safety. As you know, uh, we are required to provide drills. For years, it's always been fire drills, and now it's been expanded to active shooter, uh, lockdown type drills. So certainly, uh, having that expertise of the officers being able not only to work with the children on, uh, you know, bicycle safety or Halloween safety, but also to be able to help us analyze our uh, active shooter drills or emergency escape routes, uh, that all enters into it as well. I have heard um, nothing but really positive feedback about Officer Golden at FM High School, and um, and I from everything I've heard, uh, he's really provided a lot of um, a lot of opportunities for students to have someone else to connect with that's in a position of authority, and especially to have a person of color in that role. I think it's really important um, uh, and has provided a lot to the students and the the staff and faculty at the high school. So um, I've really uh, been a, um, from everything I've heard, I've found it to be a program that I really agree with. Um, I'm just, what I'm, what I'm wondering is, um, and I apologize, my cat keeps clawing up my legs. So if you see me jump, it's because I'm actually bleeding now. So that's happening. <laughs> Gotta love zooming from home. Um, but the, the nature of this program and, um, and then it's need for, expansion is what I'm wondering. And so I, I wish I could get more information from community members as we look to partner with the, with the school district on this. Um, if, they, if that's something that they want, do they want more officers in the school? Do they want officers like this in the elementary school? Um, that would be a really a different vibe in the elementary school than what we've seen in the past. And um, I would Repress be- I'm sorry, Kaylin. Thank you, Doctor. Um, so this is just my final thought, and then I'll allow you to respond. Um, the um, there's been a lot of pushback just in, in the last few months from students in school districts saying that they don't want police officers in their schools anymore, and uh, they've been pretty loud and vehement about that feeling that it doesn't make them feel safer. And um, I don't want to speak for the students at FM, but I I wish I could get more of their uh, feedback on whether or not this is a program that they like, if they want to see it expanded, uh, do parents really want to have this in the elementary school? Again, apologies for interrupting you. And I totally agree to go through your different points. Officer Golden is a tremendous resource. His office is constantly crowded in a good way of students stopping in to, to check in with him uh, as they traverse between house one and house two. Uh, and so certainly uh, in his presence, uh, I think uh, a lot of people uh, feel he's a role model to the students. And I think everyone, you know, checks in with him and he really genuinely cares about the students as do the other officers. Uh, as Heather indicated, whether it's been the newsletter or if you look at social media, you will see Officer Phillip working with the children at the Eagle Hill Enders Road campus, and they are able to build that relationship, and they broached the topic of sidewalks, and it eventually became a class project that I know, I believe, was presented, uh, as you're nodding uh, to you. Was, very uh, exciting. <laughs> it's, and it's very exciting, to, and that's the key, and I think you hit on it, Caitlin and Heather, and Elaine as well, that they're school information resource officers. It's that information piece for students. It's being the resource for everyone. Uh, and we wrestled, when I was in Marcellus, we wrestled with the elementary level as well. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> Sandy Hook happened. And I think it changed our perspectives in Marcellus. And uh, it just gave us pause to consider things we had not thought before. And we were fortunate enough 
in many ways when I was in Marcellus working with Chief Wicks. Uh, that's all we had. We had CSIROs, but they were part-time retirees and uh, the students gravitated to them uh, because they were like having a grandfather or grandmother in the school and uh, you know just having that grandparent there to be able to ask advice uh, was just a, a huge uh, compliment. In fact, a few years ago you may have recalled that I believe a group of students were testing high school safety and security and they were entering buildings pretending to be uh, I won't say the district they were from, but they entered uh, one district pretending to be students of that district. Over and this in Camillus, local. I think local, yeah, over in the Camillus area. And it was, I think, a well-intended school project that could have gone awry because they hadn't communicated their intent. And they actually breached a number of school districts in the area without, again, giving too much away what was cute about what happened in Marcellus because of the familiarity between the officers and the students. And again, I know that's what we're all working towards here. They entered the Marcellus buildings and were immediately <laughs> approached by the officer who said something as simple as, who am I? And the students couldn't identify by name the officer. And he says, and I know you don't go here because every student you know, knows who I am. And that's the kind of relationship. And, and building that level of trust. So uh, we were, I think, the only district that was able to stop uh, the breach of security right at the entrance. So it's that kind of relationship. You, you, you don't need the, you know, the security until you need it and you don't want it to be an afterthought, but at the same time, having uh, the presence there to be able to work with the children is immeasurable and again, having worked with officers while I was at Skinny Atlas. It was the state police over there. And then working with the town of Marcellus, or excuse me, village of Marcellus police. Uh, I just had a great experience uh, with it over the years in multiple districts. So I'm happy to hear your positive comments about our work here in FM. If you recall years ago, it wasn't an easy decision. Uh, way back when, you know, you know, bringing in an officer raised a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Was it needed? And uh, over the years, I think the program has proven itself over time. So I appreciate your kind comments. Thank you. I think that the one, um, the one thing that I would, and I'll consider to think about this more, um, is with with Sandy Hook. I mean, that was the most devastating thing for me, especially especially with my kids being so young. Um, it haunts me every year on the anniversary. It was just so devastating for this country. Uh, but the, and the need to have safe schools, I've called the schools, I've called Wegmans and I've asked like, what is yours? Cause it haunts me. I mean, I, I just don't want this to be an experience I ever have, want to have to go through. Um, and anything we can do to protect um, our students in our school districts within the town of Manlius, we should absolutely do. Um, but I just wonder if um, with all the research I've read, it doesn't always, it really, it really seems to call into question, do officers in schools actually increase safety. Um, and if there was a, a shooter situation, um, how likely are they to actually mitigate um, the amount of students that are impacted by a situation like that? And um, what are the other types of interventions that might prevent that from having happened that are perhaps more effective? And I think you touched on a couple of those with uh, more counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists inside the schools um, so I just, those are the things I'm weighing and that I'm cognizant of um, as we consider partnering with the school district on this. Um, are we really helping to increase the safety of the students and improve the safety of the schools? Or are we still in kind of response mode post Sandy Hook where I certainly would have voted for this at the time because I was so scared. I mean, fear motivates people in that way. Like, yeah, more officers. That's absolutely going to help. Um, so I just want, um, I just want to think about that more if I could have more time on that to, to really come to an understanding of, of um, will more officers actually improve that or not. And, um, and I would be very interested to hear, have our board informed by the public in a public commentary period. Um, I'd be just so interested to hear, perhaps we get no feedback, perhaps everyone says they love the officers and they want 12 more, we just can't afford it. So like, let's hear what they have to say. I would be really interested in hearing that from them. 
If I just could would add one thing uh, in, in relation to your original uh, question, uh, in addition to the leadership of, of Dr. Tice, um, remember that this, this decision was not hastily made. And in addition to that, it was made by this task force that was comprised of students, teachers, uh, um, members of the, the school board, community members. So Dr. Tice went to great efforts to formulate this large group that was highly representative of our community. And it's my understanding that not only did they vote in favor of it, but it was it was either unanimous or nearly unanimous. And Dr. Tice, you can, you can give me the, the numbers on that. But so again, this wasn't a haste decision and, and it was thoughtfully and, and and deeply thought of on, on what we need as a community. So this is a culmination of all those representatives from our community asking for this recommendation. So again, this wasn't Dr. Tice and I getting together and, and coming up with this idea. This was a, uh, an idea that was, that was brought forward by this task force that had equal representation through every aspects of, of, uh, of, of you know, of, of, of this dynamic. So it, uh, just keep that in mind. This, this wasn't just my decision or Dr. Tice's decision. Yes, Chief, thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, I am keeping, I'm definitely keeping that right at the forefront of my thoughts on this. Um, I, I really appreciate that approach because it's, it's very democratic and I think that um, that's how we get to good solutions and um, into getting to something that really works for everyone. We will all make better decisions with more input from the community uh, so I, I hope you don't take it as, as a sign of disrespect that I am not, um, that I want just a little bit more feedback um, to add on to what was created by this uh, task force. Um, I really appreciate the work that they've done to bring this to us. Um, it's more of like a trust but verify type of situation. I just want to have the opportunity to perhaps talk to those committee members, those task force members and see what their thought processes are. I just feel like I need a little bit more information before I feel comfortable voting on it. Elaine, did you have a question or a comment? I just want to comment that I also, I, I like the idea of um, potentially scheduling a public hearing so the public can comment on this. Um, I know the school board did one as well. Um, and I know I asked, we can do one too. So, um, and this again, doesn't say it doesn't take effect until September 1st. So we do have time to uh, potentially do that at our next meeting, although I don't know the agenda. So I will convert to Allison on that one. Um, but I just want to put out there that, that I do support, you know, asking the public, what, what do they think? Allison, is that something that we could, because um, I know that what we normally do is we have that two week period that we've been doing with the nature of the Zooms, um, the Zooms. Could we, could we do a public hearing, Tim, right now where we kind of start one and then and then we'll open that up for the next two weeks so that we can tie that up at our next board meeting. So we've been keeping them open just as a formality. We can, like if we want to schedule one, we can schedule one, promote it so that we don't feel the need to keep it open, but we absolutely can just, you know, set one and have it. We don't have to hold it open for two weeks. And two, this would be a second one because the school board already did have one. I like it. It was my point. The school board already did have a public um, meeting and uh, certainly are very much in support of this. And nope. I thank you, Dr. Tice, um, uh, for giving uh, on the opportunity for this role. I think it's so important. And of course, the CIROS program has been so effective. I know over the years since that started, I've spoken personally with many families that are grateful that their children have someone that they can connect to in this in in the schools and guide them and they become friends and the relationships are built not just for a semester but they're built for years and i think that is so important now um more more than ever um Karen, that's, I've, I've really heard wonderful things about officer golden i had one young student that i got to know extremely well over the last year that had a remarkably close relationship with him and he really helped to get her through to graduation this past year. So uh, it's no sign of disrespect. Um, I just, I feel personally like I just need some more, just some more feedback from the community. Um, Heather, did you have a comment or a question? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so in listening to the conversation and really appreciating that Dr. Tice is here too uh, for this context, I and hearing everything that Caitlin said and Elaine has said too, <clears throat> I think this is really interesting. Um, the careful procedure that had that took place was um, effective at doing what it needed to do for the times and no one is disrespecting that and I think what Caitlin and Elaine are, are talking about is also there's been this huge groundswell of um, conversation and understanding so people could benefit probably from having the conversation and having the case made to them again in the town context but here's the reason why I support the hearing um, idea we have very few strands of connection between us um, governmentally um, and organizationally that are this that are formal and I frankly would like to see us um, have more opportunity to work closely together so I think that a single hearing I mean I'm in support of, of this proposal I think you know if you if, if there was a motion tonight to vote on it I would vote for it but I think that an opportunity like this for us to stand together and discuss an issue is extremely valuable, um, especially right now. So if it's if it's not going to, I, what I would want to know is if it's going to have an impact on our ability to retain any of the people that you want to hire. I just wanted to know exactly whether that would have a negative impact if we waited and didn't vote on this tonight. And if not, and I, and I, I also understand the fact that the district is under incredible pressure and extremely busy um, given the times and the pandemic. So I understand that's a concern as well. So I understand it's a huge ask. Um, and so I want to acknowledge that as well. But if you're open to it and it doesn't keep us from hiring the people that are intended to be hired, um, I think we should do it. Kim, have you, you have reviewed the contract and uh, do you have any comment? Were you talking to me, Karen? Yes, I'm sorry, Tim. Yes, yes. that's okay. Um, I have reviewed it, and um, the issue that Elaine brings up, there's both of them are valid issues. I thought it was a two-year contract because that's what it does. Um, so there's some work that might need to be done on this contract. Uh, I'm also a little uncomfortable with um, our police officers uh, saying that they're going to provide confidential counseling. I think that is, I don't know that we can say that. I mean, if, if a, in a, as an example, if a student comes and tells a police officer that something's happening in their house where there is a crime being committed, I don't know that the police officer can keep that confidential. So I'd like to work on language for that. Um, Overall, I've reviewed it a couple times. It looks fine, and it, it's very much like our CSIRO contracts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just a couple small things. Do the CSIRO contracts um, talk about confidential counseling as well? I don't recall, um, I but it, but I will check it. But as a, Elaine brings up a very good point. So I'd like to make a motion. Did you have a question? Go ahead, Sarah. I'd like to make a motion that we set a public hearing for the 24th, I believe is the correct date. The and 26th, I think. All right, 26th, sorry. And that we have um, legal review in the meantime before the public an announcement so that a slightly, very slightly corrected version can be available and then um, have that be um, and, and just have a, an opportunity for public comment at that meeting. And then we can vote that night. We don't have to hold it open. And the right. contract will still be in, in, in effect before September 1st. Uh, Sarah, I, I do want to also ask Mike the question that, um, I'm sorry, Chief Crowell, the question that Councillor Waters asked was, are we going to jeopardize any of the people lined up to be accepting these positions? Well, the answer to that is <clears throat> that's very possible right now. As of today, we're, we're, uh, we have, I have two officers, at least two officers, potentially three, I'm, I'm sorry, retired officers um, that are very much interested in the position. Um, so 
whether if we wait two weeks and we lose those, those possible candidates, it, it's possible. Um, because again, with the school district starting, uh, with every district throughout you know, the county and this county and surrounding counties, there's gonna be probably other opportunities that these individuals may, may go to because they, they made a decision uh, earlier. I, I, don't, I don't know that. Um, so it, it's hard to say. Um, I, I, do, I do know that um, as part of the contract in the agreement is uh, once, once it is signed and it's agreed upon and, and I, I'm able to move forward, uh, we have to start a selection process. That selection process includes a background investigation, includes uh, interviews with the school district because they need to be involved in the selection process. Uh, that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not trying to put you under any pressure, but the school year is going to begin here any anytime soon. And, uh, um, uh, you know, so it, who knows what's going to happen. We, today we have three, tomorrow we may have zero. So I, I do hear that. I do hear that, but um, right, we still have our, SR, our our other officers at the school. So this is expanding, not. Um, Karen, I don't mean to interject, but there's a motion on the floor. There should be a there second. We can I, have second. I seconded the motion. Oh, you did. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you a second. Oh, I didn't hear you either, Kaylin. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to get it wrapped up tonight. I think it's uh, the utmost important, but uh, so we'll set the uh, hearing for the 26th then, Allison. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tice for being here. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank and you Chief, so thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it. Do we have a time for that, Allison? Uh, 6.35. Perfect. Thank you, Allison. Okay, uh, we have a, uh, another date which we need to set, a public hearing. This is for uh, the Pinizzato property on the corner of Enders and 92. This is for a zone change. What we need to accomplish tonight is just to set the date for the public hearing. So if I could have a motion. Tim, did you want to uh, add anything with that? Um. Yeah, I did prepare a motion or a, a resolution for this, and it does contemplate us doing seeker, seeker, um, which would take us very little bit of a time. If we can always do it at the next meeting before the public hearing, or we can do it tonight. Um, it's your preference. Let's do it at the next meeting. Okay. Before, well, it's on everyone's mind, everyone's there. That would be great. So if we can just set the meeting, the uh, public hearing date. Okay, Matt, we need a motion for that, please. I'm going to make a motion to set a public hearing for 640 on August 26th. Is second. there a second? Yeah. Other? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and then the next item is for a proposed hydrant for Wellwood um, Middle School. Um, and and uh, this is a request from Aqua. Um, and Rob, do you have any additional information we might need on that? Karen, typically I get, uh, usually get a letter on that, but it's usually because of the extension of the water line. Doug, mm -hmm. you may know. It's, my guess is, is they probably Doug. just are putting a hydrant on the school property. Um, so yes. Doug may, may have a better idea on that. Doug, uh, please. I, I, have a, I, have reviewed a, I have reviewed a correspondence that the supervisor received from OCWA. Uh, the expansion, I think you've all seen over at Wellwood, um, OCWA is moving one hydrant to one end of the campus and including one new hydrant. So like we've done in the past, uh, the request is that uh, the hydrants are in, and um, the request is to have the supervisor sign the agreement that would include uh, payment of those hydrants into the consolidated water district. So our recommendation is to move forward. Uh, I forwarded the, the paperwork uh, uh, to Allison's office and, and she has it on file. Okay, so all we need is a motion then to um enter uh, the document for the supervisor's signature. Correct. So 
So I'll make a motion to uh, give permission to the supervisor to uh, approve of the application for the hydrant uh, at Wellwood. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, any uh, correspondence or new business? Then we'll go right to the highway superintendent, Mr. Cushing, please. Yes, Karen. Normally, the last couple of weeks I've been quiet. I haven't been able to purchase anything, so I, I want to come to the board tonight. Um, we actually, it's been a nightmare season to try and purchase anything, unfortunately, with the COVID. Um, the OGS contract is actually, the build-out dates for these pickups is basically well past. So what we've done, and we've done this in the past, has gone off of a mini-bid system. I know the police has done this. Uh, so we did put out a mini bid for uh, a proposal for our new Ford uh, 350 pickup truck. Uh, I think you guys got the, I hope you guys, I think everybody got the results from those bids. Um, but there was the two two bidders, um, and I would make a recommendation that we would take the uh, the bid for 43,000 from uh, Genesee Valley Ford. Um, I've, I've done business with these with this organization before in the past. We have purchased from them before. I think they're actually a subsidiary of Van Bortel Ford, who typically has the uh, OGS contract. So I'm very comfortable with working with them. Uh, so I guess I just need a motion to, and it has been budgeted for this year's budget. Uh, so we'll need a motion to uh, approve that uh, pickup truck at 43,000. So I would make a motion to approve the um, Genesee Valley Ford for the 2021 Ford model F350 for $43,000. Second, please. I'll second. John, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Karen, Opposed? And also, also with that, yes. Karen, um, mm -hmm. we have to drive, well, typically we buy the winter equipment separately for it. Um, we're going to be buying this um, off contract. Um, actually, we've got a couple of, uh, of uh, quotes that we've got for the plow packages. Typically, we're able to buy them fairly close. Um, we've got a couple of quotes. Um, the best quote I've got is 7,300, and that's for an extendable uh, front end plow that would go, that's with them installing it without us installing for $7,300. I'll need a motion separately to pass the plow equipment for that if we could. Um, I'll make the motion to approve that. Okay, Again, please. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Anyway. So, well, actually, I have one more thing I just wanted to mention, and I promise I'll go quick. <laughs> um, I mentioned to, to uh, actually Sarah, I got a letter or an email from the state on our CHIPS funding. This is the second round of CHIPS is going out right now. Uh, we were promised about three weeks ago the letters were going to be coming out, meaning that we will be receiving our CHIPS funding uh, by official letter. Um, we received an email the other day stating that the letters are being held indefinitely at this point. And the representative from the state didn't want to speculate at this point in time, um, you know, to what's going to happen, whether we are going to receive it. Now, we've all been told we're going to receive it. Um, but I think, obviously, with what's going on, um, everyone's tightening their belts here. So um, we'll see. I've sent all the paperwork in to receive reimbursement from our CHIPS funding. Um, we have got all our checks back. Everything's in place. Um, it's been sent to the state. So I'll keep the board up to date with what's going on with that, but I don't want to get to a point where at the end of the year we've overspent either. So um, we're going to have to just evaluate where we are um, here probably within the next month or so. And if we've got to hold back on a project this year just because we're not going to be receiving that that chips funding, I want the board to be able to understand why we did that. So, Rob, yeah. um, question for you. So you're getting ready to work on your budget as well. Mm -hmm. um, have you considered and is it is it something that I, and I, I think Councilor Bollinger is works with you um, as a liaison? Yep. Is that right? So maybe you've already had this conversation. So forgive me if you have. But have you considered basically planning around the idea that ships funding is suspended for two years? Yeah, I mean, that's something we have to look at um, either as a board and as, as you know, as a highway superintendent, that's certainly a possibility. Um, we are in a position where we typically take it as a revenue side, um, so we don't put it in the budget directly. Um, so we have a little bit of a, a, allowance for, for some movement there. So 
Um, I'm very comfortable going into the next year. Um, yeah, we, we're going to budget typically like we have over the last 10, 12 years that we've done it. And we base it off a, a certain amount of years. Um, so I, I, to answer your questions, yes, I am comfortable with working through that process this year. Um, you got to remember, I believe, Tim, if, if I'm not wrong on this, I believe that's all bonded monies. CHIPS fund from the state of New York is all bonded monies. So the money's typically there. It's just a matter of how they're going to send that out. You know what I mean? In what form and how much to each municipality. And you've already got some municipalities that have already received full reimbursement. So it's, it's, it's time, I think, more than anything else. So keeping up with the paperwork and keeping up with your documentation is going to be huge over the next year or two. Um, but, I, but I'm comfortable with saying that I think we're going to receive our CHIPS funding. It's just going to be a matter of, of a little bit longer time here. Of when? Of when, yeah. 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 Thank you, Rob. And you'll Thank keep you. us updated, I know. I appreciate it. I will. Thanks for you the time, guys. You bet. Um, planning and development, I would like to recognize Mr. Capriati for his um, effectiveness with this uh, codes, um, with the ISO rating. Thank you so much and uh, congratulations, Randy. Do you have anything you might like to add tonight? I uh, just had a couple of things. Sorry for signing in late. I was serving the community on a fire call and we ran uh -oh. a little bit late. So, um, I hope everyone's safe. Oh, yes. Um, and the last thing I have is I know a few months ago or so we adopted the New York State Unified Solar Permitting Process for 25 kW and below. Um, that was finalized today. The permit was actually amended to fit the town of Manlius. And at the last hour, myself and Lisa updated and uploaded it onto our website. So it's actually in effect on our website, ready to use right now in three different places. So we're moving forward with that. Very, very, very exciting, Randy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Doug, do you have anything um, tonight that you would like to add? No, I think we're all set. Okay. Thanks, um, Karen. Mr. Fratesky. I am all set, Madam Deputy Supervisor. I think we're in good shape. Okay, thank you. And Allison? I'm all set, thank you. And the chief, do you have anything else you'd like to add tonight, chief? Yeah, just a couple things. Um, our, our, new, our new police officer is doing really, really well. Officer Great. Grogan is uh, still in his field training uh, process and uh, he's being accepted uh, quite uh, nicely with the community and, and uh, the, our coworkers. Uh, our in-service training program, we fired up again this month. I've already completed two of those classes. Tomorrow will be the the final class uh, and uh, this month we're training on legal updates <clears throat> and um, uh, we're talking about officer wellness was which is one of those pillars in the 21st century policing model and also uh, a little bit on classroom evoc which is emergency vehicle uh, driving courses so we're going to finish finish that up we're doing so consistent with the general or the, uh, the governor's order on distancing and masking and sanitation um, we're still dealing with the mess at the building. I would encourage any one of the counselors at any time to come and visit our, our work environment right now. Um, thank you so much for the, uh, the ability to order and utilize those trailers. It made a tremendous difference. Um, there's a lot of things going on in our building right now. It's, it, it's actually almost, almost difficult to, to uh, conduct business in, in the way that we would like to conduct business. It's, it's quite the mess. Uh, the town supervisor uh, came over for a tour last week and I showed him exactly what, uh, what it looked like. And, um, uh, but we're getting through it. Uh, so far, no grievances. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I attended my very first meeting for the Onondaga County wide uh, New York State law enforcement reform process, which was dictated through the executive order and from the governor. Uh, I attended that meeting. The supervisor was also at the meeting and uh, it was well attended by a whole bunch of partners. And um, in that process, the district attorney 
uh, came up with some guidance, uh, early on guidance on how we're gonna uh, fulfill the uh, requirements of the executive order. Uh, with that, uh, there were three co-chairs that were named in that process. The Sheriff of Onondaga County, the Democratic Majority Leader from uh, County Executive's Office, Linda Irvin, and myself. Uh, so the three of us were gonna co-chair that process uh, to, to gain some uh, forward momentum uh, countywide and then at some point, uh, we're gonna break up into these subcommittees uh, to address each community within Onondaga County and those community needs based on the executive order. Um, so I'm happy to be a, a part of that process um, and uh, I will keep everybody posted on, on how we move forward with, with that. Uh, I do uh, have another meeting scheduled with the district attorney and those other two members of, of the co-chair uh, committee and uh, we're, we're gonna discuss again uh, how we're going to move forward with, with that process and uh, that's all I have. Steve thank you so much and thanks for that report uh, from the uh, information from the district attorney um, and I know you've been busy with the break-ins with the cars and all of that hopefully that will settle down too so. Yeah I certainly hope so we uh, We've experienced a rash of car larcenies and stolen vehicles. We finally recovered another stolen car today out of the city. And uh, it was stolen from a residence here in the town of Manlius. And unfortunately, it was an easy, it was an easy grab because the keys were in the ignition. Um, but uh, we're, we continue to put out on our social media post uh, the idea that folks should lock their cars, not leave any kind of valuables in their vehicles. In fact, yesterday I received a, a, a message from one of our local media broadcasters and uh, we're going to try to do something on, on one of the local media channels to reinforce this idea of locking your cars and uh, please leave valuables out of, out of, out of sight and, and certainly lock, lock your homes as well because uh, some of these instances have uh, resulted in uh, burglaries as well as car larcenies and stolen vehicles. So we just, we just need to be able to educate the community on, on uh, keeping themselves safe. Thank you, Chief. Ann, Oot, our town manager, do you have anything tonight? Just a quick update on uh, town court. Uh, last evening, they held their first uh, evening court session since uh, the COVID shutdown. Um, the court clerks reported that it went uh, very well. Just a couple little tweaks they need to make for tomorrow evening, uh, but and all in all, I think uh, it was uh, a good evening as far as court goes. Uh, one good thing that came out of this is the uh, Justice Court Assistance Program from New York State reimbursed the town uh, $1,300 for the plexiglass barriers that were installed in the courtroom. Uh, one of the court clerks uh, submitted that and we just received uh, the payment this week. So that was nice. Uh, and also uh, those in attendance in the court last night, uh, whether it was uh, you know, even um, the, the attorneys in attendance, even some of uh, the defendants in court uh, actually remarked at how uh, well laid out our court is and how it flowed very well. So uh, kudos to the judges and the court staff for uh, getting everything in order. So that is good. Getting it all to work. Yep. Thank you, Ann. Uh, let's hear from the town board. So, um, Councillor Bollinger, we'll start with you, please. Um, okay, so I have two things to comment on. Um, last, I'm off right. last time uh, we had a public information meeting regarding the new commercial zoning. We got a lot of good feedback from that. I wanna thank um, everybody who took the time to look at those materials and we will be doing a revision. So we're meeting again later this week and so the the final version is not yet available for public comment so we will delay the public hearing until sometime in september and i just want to make people aware that that's still um being revised uh with regard to the commercial zoning and the other thing i am pleased to announce is we had our first um, meeting with the town of sullivan with regard to the salt springs water project so that has begun. We've we scheduled monthly meetings to keep it on track. We do anticipate that the public meeting um, with regard to the water districts um, will be sometime in November. So that's, that's sort of the cycle that we're on now. 
with the permitting going into the first part of 2021. So I just wanted to give people an update on that. Um, there was definitely a delay due to the public health emergency, but we're back on track now. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Deer. Uh, yeah, not much uh, from me this time. Uh, still working on trying to figure out what we're going to do to get everybody back in person. We're going to be trying out audio quality tomorrow to see if we can do the budget sessions since there's no real public interaction there tomorrow to see if we can get there. Still waiting on some quotes for mics, um, but we're going to we're going to do what we can to keep moving forward and um, you know, if some of the meetings have to take a little hit to audio quality just to get people back in the room so we can move a little faster, it might be that way. Um, but we're going to keep trying to get back so that we're all in person, see each other's faces again. Um, but I will keep everybody updated on that as much as I can. Thank you, John. Caitlin. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor. Um, so um, a couple quick updates. Um, I am I'm on the budget committee and we did have a meeting um, since our last board meeting uh, to start better understanding the process uh, that we'll all be going through. Um, the four uh, new town councilors, the class of 2020, we are um, all kind of learning this together and it's a critical component of, um, of our roles in the town. and. We're learning this process in a year where the budgets of all the departments are completely askew from what they would normally be. So um, it's not really a good test case. So we've got our work cut out for us, uh, but um, Councillor Bollinger is um, uh, the chair of that committee and is uh, helping to guide all of us in that process as we learn how that's all going to work out. Um, I did meet with Randy this morning um, and we started our process as I am the liaison to the planning department. Um, and he was also very helpful in helping me to better understand how that process is going to work. So Randy, thank you so much for teaching me even as I'm liaisoning to you. <laughs> it's very much appreciated. Uh, so I'm eager to see how uh, the last several months um, and how, um, as Rob mentioned with the CHIPS funding, um, how is this going to impact the town going forward uh, we want to make sure that, that we stick within our budget. We create a budget that's mindful of, um, of the crisis that we're facing at a state level. Um, I am hoping to see our Congress come together to uh, provide some financial resources for uh, communities across uh, the country, um, notably New York State, Onondaga County, and the town of Manlius, as well as our, our colleagues um, throughout Onondaga County. Um, on another note, uh, Sustainable Manlius has really um, had to uh, take a little bit of a backseat over the last few months um, as the public health crisis uh, really rendered that um, really difficult to move forward with. We only had one in-person meeting. We were, our second one was scheduled and we had to cancel it in mid-March and we haven't been able to get that back really up and running because a lot of those relationships were so new. And um, so we are working on, on getting a Zoom meeting scheduled. So if you're interested in environmental and social sustainability, uh, please email me um, and I can make sure you're on the list. Um, and to everyone that's already on the list and that attended that first meeting, we will be reconvening that um, in the coming weeks. And then finally, um, I just wanted to thank the Town of Manlius Police Department. I did call the police at 1130 the other night when I thought someone was knocking on my door. Turned out it was my neighbor hanging up a clock. So <laughs> they were ever the more gracious of answering my emergency call, even as I found out that there was no emergency to be had. They were, um, they were there so quickly and they accepted my, my apologies for my error. <laughs> but they made us feel much safer and they, um, the girls, my daughters were excited to have them in the driveway for the few minutes they were there. So. Thank you, Chief, uh, if you could extend my appreciation to the officers that responded to our emergency call. <laughs> that's all for me. I hope that's the greatest emergency you ever have, Caitlin. <laughs> I sure hope so. That, if that's the worst of it, then I'm very blessed. <laughs> Good. Elaine, please. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor. So I just want to update everyone where we are for the Public Safety Advisory Committee. Um, we did create that the, the form. We had over 50 residents fill that out. Um, a, an amazing community response. Um, Councillor Deer and I have been going through them and we'll be 
uh, notifying residents, um, hopefully by the end of this week, um, when we can potentially have our first meeting. Uh, due to the response, of course, we couldn't fit everyone on the committee, um, but we will be keeping in touch with everyone who did apply um, to make sure that they are engaged and can uh, public comment when there is a public comment time. <laughs> Um, and I'm so, I'm very excited too, to have chief, um, our chief on the DA's committee too, so we can see this as a, uh, a county-wide uh, initiative and then also on the local level of uh, town of Manlius. So I'm very excited um, and I'll keep everyone up to date. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. And Heather, please. Thank you, Deputy Supervisor. I, um, uh, was I asked and I want to thank Allison and um, and John for setting up the uh, list serves on our on our civic engagement on the town of Manlius website when you click you know um, that you want to receive notifications so if you go I want to tell everybody in the public really quickly you go to um, townofmanlius.org and then once you're on the page, if you want to get onto lists and get notified, if you want agendas for meetings, you just click on stay informed, then you have lots of options. Three new options for you are the comprehensive, comprehensive plan updates, sustainable manliness, and also um, the public safety advisory committee. So what we're gonna be doing is sending out an email to um, to what we're going to notify the community about the dates for all of the meetings and options for people to participate in things that are available to them. Um, we're putting all of that together and want to communicate it broadly at one time. I'm going to be emailing. I wanted to wait until the list was up and then I'm going to email um, the 69 folks who, this is incredible, this res the responses we've had from the community who are going to be engaged with the comprehensive plan committee um, at its, at its uh, launch here. Um, and the next step for comprehensive planning is, of course, to get the listening sessions um, on the themes um, scheduled and organized. So that's what we're doing. And also on the tree commission, of which I am um, proudly a new, new official member of as a co-chair along, um, along with our, our wonderful chair, Stephanie, we, were going, we are going to have a meeting on the 18th um, at 3.30 and it's a it's becoming a very vibrant and active committee because we can focus in on some issues and then make uh, plans and ideas to sustainable manliness as well and have that conversation and it also connects to comprehensive planning one of the things that we're going to do too is be able to articulate how do, how do we sort of discern what's comprehensive planning and sustainable manliness so we can have that conversation one of the in, initial conversations i i, I know we, i've had with some counselors is What's great is that sustainable manliness gives people the ability to focus and very, and, and comprehensive planning takes a lot of time before you can actually implement things. And so sustainable manliness gives us an opportunity to seize opportunities and to be um, tactical and strategic right now on projects. Um, so I think we're, we're lucky to have, you know, have, have options for folks. And I'd say the same, I'd like to thank Elaine for all she's doing on the Public Safety Advisory Committee. There's this very important structure that we're lucky to have Chief Pearl be um, at the leadership helm for, for the county. Um, but there's so much interest that if the counselors can serve to engage people and help um, invest them even further in, um, in, in our police and in our public safety measures, um, I think that's a good thing. So. Thank you to everybody for staying in touch. Thank you, Heather. And I just have a couple of items I wanna share. I did attend the um, very well organized, as always, a CRC committee that was hosted by the Town of Manlius Police Department. But what we had a great opportunity was to hear uh, the commissioner of Onondaga County um, uh, Emergency Management Dan Wears, and he was excellent. And I certainly didn't realize the magnitude of work that has gone into this um, department. It is amazing how they handled the COVID response, um, their ongoing management, and what they know they have to do. 
um, in the future. And uh, they're so appreciative of uh, everyone's cooperation. Um, and he, he is, we're very fortunate to have a commissioner like Dan at the helm. It was a great opportunity, um, Chief, to uh, be with him for almost an hour. Um, I also would like to recognize Allison Weber, our town clerk, who uh, was recently voted in as district, district director uh, for the New York State Clerks Association. So Allison, congratulations. Well deserved. Oh, we have all these rock stars. Well, congratulations. congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Allison. And um, with that, I have not uh, seen it here in my packet tonight, but I understand the supervisor's report was submitted um, to you, Allison. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, with that, I would like a motion to adjourn. Do we have to approve the supervisor's yes. report? Uh, yes. Yep. A motion to approve the supervisor's report uh, yes. for Deputy July. I would make that motion Perfect. to approve the supervisor's report for July. All in favor? Um, Pause. Did we second? Do we have to do a second? Yeah, yes. No. Oh, I thought, Elaine, I thought you did. I'm sorry. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many pictures at once. All right. <laughs> All in favor then? Aye. Good. Thank you. And a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second it and thank you very thank much you. for leading tonight. Absolutely, my pleasure. Karen, you'll have to tell Ed that you crushed him in time. Yeah. <laughs> that he always keeps us here till midnight and you I'll tell him. Tired. I'll tell him several times. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Happy summer, everybody. <laughs>